Hello everyone and welcome back to a new build the video, your English personalization channel. I guess you've already watched our previous videos about TTF. In this one, we will talk about the main problems of this technique and we will provide some solutions so you can keep your printer in perfect working order. Want to know more? Let's get started. Before we get to the problems, let's see some parts of the printer you should know about, as we will mention them during the video. First, we have the echo tank, the container where the ink tanks are located. It should be filled up to at least one third full of ink to avoid problems. The waste ink tank. To prevent the waste pad from filling up, printers are modified with a waste ink tank from cleaning and maintaining the printhead. It must be emptied regularly or it may cause a breakdown. The dampers. These are the cartridges located above the printhead and are connected to the eco tank through a tube. The printhead. It's the component that helps transfer ink and needs to be looked after. We'll explain how to clean it and replace it when needed. The capping station. This is where the printhead rests and flushes the waste ink. It keeps the head in good condition. The wiper blade. It is a rubber blade that cleans the head when it comes out of the capping station. Now that we know all these parts, we can move on to the possible problems and the solutions. No color at all. Especially when printing for the first time, we may find that no color appears on the printouts. This might be due to two main problems. Initial ink charging. First of all, load your DTF printer with ink. To do this, open the cap of each tank and fill it with its corresponding ink. Make sure you load it with the correct color, which is usually indicated on a label. Be especially careful to keep all the caps closed except for the one you are filling, or you may contaminate all the colors. Once they are full, turn on the printer and press the ink button for a few seconds. This will start the initial charge, which can take up to 20 minutes. Sometimes the initial charging is not completed correctly, and therefore there is no color at all during the printing process. To fix this, open the resetter software provided with the parties of the printer, click on the particular adjustment mode, go to the ink charge option and click OK. In the drop down menu, choose initial ink charge, tick not increment waste ink pad counter and click on ink charge. It will ask you to restart the printer, resetting the ink charge. Transportation lock. One of the most common problems is setting the transportation lock to the lock position, which stops the ink supply from the ink tank to the printhead, so you may be left without ink when it runs out in the dampers. Make sure you unlock the transportation lock before printing. No white or any color. This is actually the most typical problem we will come across at some point. It is caused by white ink sedimentation, which is the main cause of all the issues but also what makes this technique so attractive. Let's get to the possible solutions. Tank stirring. Before performing any printing or maintenance action, you should shake the tanks to avoid sedimentation. It is a simple but effective method and will prevent many problems. Some current printers already include this feature. Print head cleaning. Before printing, run a simple print head cleaning. If you normally use the printer, this will be enough. Go to Print Preferences, Utility, and then click on Head Cleaning. Do a nozzle check to make sure all the colors are coming out correctly. Power Cleaning If you do not see improvement after the head cleaning, you should run a power cleaning. This cleaning will completely empty the circuit and the dampers and refill them by releasing pressure and unclogging the nozzles. Shaking or replacement of the dampers Shake the dampers at least once every 15 days. To do this, turn on the printer and when the head unlocks, unplug it. We recommend using a power strip to avoid damaging the connection when pulling. Bring the print head to the working position. Remove the screw from the cover and with the help of a flat screwdriver, loosen each damper. Now shake them to prevent sediments. Make sure there is no air in them. If there's any, you can suck it out using a syringe. If the dampers have a lot of sediment, you may need to replace them. Simply detach the hose and place it in the new one. 
reassemble everything. Flushing. This consists in flushing the cleaning liquid through the nostrils of the head. There are two types of flushing, one without removing the head and the other by disassembling it completely. Flushing without removing the head. Turn on the printer and when the print head starts to move, turn off the power using a power strip. Remove the screw and the print head cover. Put kitchen paper and slide the print head top of it. Take out the cartridges with the help of a flat screwdriver and keep them in order. Pour some liquid into the container and slightly fill the syringe. Attach the hose to the nozzle and lightly press the cleaning solution through the print head. Now repeat the operation on the clock nozzles. Put everything back in place. Flushing by disassembling the head. Turn the printer on and unplug it from the power strip when the head moves to release it. Take it to the working area and remove the cover. Take out the dampers. Now, free the right cover that holds the flex cables from the head with the help of a screwdriver. Next, remove the back piece, using a screwdriver to loosen the tabs on each side. Finally, remove the three remaining screws using a magnetic screwdriver to release the head. Remove the head and place it upside down, taking special care not to touch the silver piece, otherwise you will damage the head print. Carefully release the flex cables all at once. Use a cotton bed to clean around the edge of the print head, which may have dried ink on it. Now, use a syringe with cleaning solution and flush it through each of the nozzles. Place a bucket or container underneath so you don't make a mess. You should press down, but not too hard. You will see a cloud of ink come out, followed by the cleaning fluid. Once you have finished, reassemble the head, ensuring that the cables are correctly fitted. Put the screws, the protectors and the dampers back in place. Print head replacement. If there's still no ink showing after trying all the evolved methods, you should probably replace the print head. As explained earlier in the flushing process, taking apart the print head is not a difficult task. Simply install a new one, and your printer will be back up and running. When you replace a print head, we recommend replacing the dampers as well. Stains on the paper or a smudged design. Sometimes, when printing, you end up getting ink smudges all over your printout. It can also happen that the ink doesn't seem to stick to the film, leaving a sort of mixed ink mess. Let's see how to fix this. Printing on the right side of the film. The transparency film has only one printable side, which is more porous so that the ink sticks. This is usually the matte side, but sometimes it is difficult to identify the printable side. If you start printing and the ink mixes, it's because you're either using way too much ink or printing on the wrong side. For printing, wipe the film with a cloth or paper, turn it over and print. You don't really have to throw the film away. Correct tray placement. Often, the issue of the print head rubbing against the design comes from a poorly positioned upper tray which allows the print to come out straight. If there is a bump or the front of the film trips, it will lift and the head will rub against the design. Make sure the tray is in contact with the printer but not up towards the upper side. Dry ink on the head or wiper plate. DTF ink is a paste ink that settles and then solidifies. To keep the print head clean, the wiper blade wipes the underside of the head to remove any residue. The problem is that both the wiper blade and the capping station and the head itself eventually end up with gummy residues on the edges that need to be removed. To do this, unblock the head as we have already explained. With the help of a flat screwdriver, push the wiper blade to the back of the printer. You will see that it is full of dry ink. 
can it use in tweezers and a cotton bud deep in cleaning fluid. Do the same on the capping station, where you'll see solid ink on the edge. As for the head, we have already explained how to clean the edges once it's removed. Firm feeding problems. One of the most common issues is firm feeding. Either because the printer fails to grab it, or because it spits it up. One of the most effective solutions is to place a board or a few sheets of paper in the paper support to stiffen the film so that the printer fits it correctly. There may also be a problem of dirt on the paper fit rollers located on the right side facing the front of the printer. To clean them, use kitchen paper soaked in alcohol. Place it against the roller and press the paper fit button. Now, clean the lower roller by rolling it on the cleaning paper. Finally, if nothing has worked, put some masking tape at the back of the button corner of the film to prevent it from slipping when fitting. Printer control panel lights. On the printer's front panel, you may find two types of errors besides those related to paper. Lights flashing alternately. This is because the printer assumes that the maintenance pad that gets filled with waste ink has reached the end of its service life. As you know, the printer is modified so that the ink goes into a waste ink tank and not into the pad, but the printer does not know this. To fix the error, deactivate the antivirus and open the resetter software we sent you. Go to particular adjustment mode, choose waste ink pad counter and press OK. Then press check to read the counters. Tick the two boxes and press initialize. It will ask you to turn the printer off and then turn it back on. Now, if you click check, you will see the counters at zero and the error will be solved. Lights flashing at the same time. The paper and ink indicators are flickering at the same time. This is an indicator that something is clearly wrong. Here's how to solve it. Clean the encoder strip, the transparent strip, over the metal guide, using an eye cleaning wipe. You can also use a little alcohol if you like. This error can also happen when you move the head coverage without unblocking and removing the power. In this case, switch off the printer, bring the coverage to its original position, and switch it back on, although it might be damaged. Software problems. Some of the problems we come across are not related to the printer or its maintenance, but an incorrect configuration of the digital factory software. There are some aspects worth considering. Software and driver updates. The Gatlin team keeps updating the software and the drivers to fix bugs and add new features, so we highly recommend you keep both up to date. To do so, go to Help, check for updates, and follow the on-screen steps. To update the drivers, go to Devices, Manage Devices, choose the one you're using and click on the World icon. If there are any updates, it will ask you if you want to install them. Follow the on-screen steps and you're ready to go. Does not print a lot of white. In the software, you have different print modes that you can modify or even create. Basically, you can increase the white in the color settings by increasing the percentage of white ink and the amount of white that will print underneath the black color. We have tested this using two different color modes, one at 80% ink density and 40% underneath the black, and one at 100% density and 100% underneath the black. The differences are quite obvious. Incorrect pole configuration. In some cases, an error may appear in the port configuration once the printing process has started. To fix this, right-click on the file to be printed and click on Delete Error. Now, go to Manage Print Queues and in your printer, click on the drop-down menu and choose the correct port. Then close it and you can print. We really hope this maintenance and troubleshooting manual has helped you solve the main difficulties of this technique. If you have any more questions or we have left anything out, leave us a comment down below so we can help you and all the viewers too. Don't forget to leave us a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to our channel so you know when there is a new video. 
Also, remember to follow us on our social media, where we post plenty of ideas, authors and news from all areas of personalization. See you in the next video!